Wow, what a lovely evening. You know, normally this allotment plot, this allotment site rather is so noisy with people strimming and mowing and all that sort of thing. But tonight it's just, all you can hear are the birds singing. It's so nice. This is my favourite time really to come to the allotment in the evening, just for half an hour or so. Get a lot done in uh, half an hour every day. Anyway, so I'll give you a quick tour. So down here, I've got all my early red cabbages and there's some of them looking really nice now, just starting to heart up. So based on last year's experience, I should be eating these in June and early July. And by the time we finish these, the ones back at home should be ready in August. And then we just keep on going with red, red cabbages until March time. I've got my Brussels sprouts in here with a few onions around the outside and uh, they're looking quite nice. I've got a few Brussels sprouts back at home in the kitchen garden. And this bed, which I've just prepared, this is um, going to be beetroot, my main storage crop, because all the way down here, I have my squash plants, uh, winter squash. And so it gets a bit of shade, so they need to go in early. And then here we've got the shallots, red sun and golden globe. I'm looking quite nice as well. And then down here, I've got my last probably batch of spinach. Um, and down the middle there, I've got yakon. And yakon is a bit slow to get started. So I'm hoping I get that spinach crop out of there uh, before the yakon kind of takes over. I've got lots of little pots around. These all got potatoes in. And the plot really is in transition at the moment. I've got a lot going on. Uh, I've got some gooseberries down here. Uh, I've just taken the last of my carrots out of here. And I'm just starting to see my uh, main crop potatoes just starting to break surface. So uh, that's pretty good news. Uh, I've got a lot of potatoes obviously ready already. <laughs> ready already. Um, but uh, I've still got. Uh, a lot of main crops that are just coming up through the ground and this bed behind me it's got a few straggly carrots a few straggly lettuces in it and salad onions and this bed's going to be the autumn winter and early spring carrots so there just behind the camera i've got my little orchard area and I've got two apple trees there and a cherry tree looking quite nice and then it's underplanted with elephant garlic and take thinnings out of there uh, to use as leeks at this time of year there's still plenty there uh, to be used as elephant garlic and then I'll just use, leave the uh, uh, sort of some of them in the ground um, for thinnings for next year and then in this bed I've got my potatoes and these are my second earlies. And in this bed is gonna go purple sprouting broccoli in July. So that's why these are fairly well on uh, because otherwise I wouldn't get a chance really to get them out of the ground before the purple sprouting broccoli needs to go in. And then here we've got field beans which I've just left to grow uh, to feed the soil. I'll be chopping those off pretty soon because if you've got field beans really at the time they start to flower is the best time to chop them off um, because otherwise they start depleting nitrogen from the soil at that point once they start to flower and form beans. And then here I've got the broad beans. <laughs> Not very many broad beans to be honest uh, because we don't freeze them. We only eat them fresh and you get quite a good crop from pretty small area like that and then down there that's all me brassicas so calabrese uh, and uh, cauliflowers and they're being pecked a little bit by the pigeons but as I said before I think when I did the previous tour I don't really mind that so much because you know the pigeons got to eat something and uh, just munching on some 
uh, Calibri sleeves isn't going to hurt very much. And then actually just down there, I've got my summer fruit and raspberries. Quite a few flowers on those by the look of it. And then here we've got the ever-bearing strawberries, Mara de Bois. Starting to uh, come into flower now. And then here, this is the main spinach bed that I'm harvesting at the moment. It's pretty lush. Can't believe how much spinach you can harvest at this time of year. And it just grows back <laughs> exactly the same uh, the week later. It's really quite incredible by comparison with the amount of spinach that you need to get a good harvest every week over winter, probably three or four times as much. So that's looking pretty good. And there I've got some little turnips and some spring cabbages. And then behind me here, I've got my next succession, my last probably succession um, on this plot of calabrese and cauliflowers with some radishes as well that I've forgotten about, which are now too big to harvest. So I'll get those composted pretty soon. And then this is those spring cabbages. And then here I've got my asparagus bed. And I like the look of that as well. It's going pretty well. Picking a big bunch of that every day at the moment. And I've got my onions sort of interplanted. These are just the few that survived. We had a bad winter here and uh, a lot of them died, but uh, the ones that are left looking pretty good. And blueberries down here. This spinach here is um, just about to go to seed. But to be honest, I don't really need it because just that one little bed is enough and I'll be replanting this pretty soon. Um, I'm not 100% sure what's going in here, but it'll be peppers or it'll be melons. I have to look at my plan to know which. And I've got some more spinach there that has gone to seed. And I've got my second early peas down there. We've had peas now for a month. These are just starting uh, to be harvest ready. So they're sugar snaps and Oregon sugar pod mange too. And just a few salad onions as well. And then here I've got my furthest on red cabbages, looking pretty good. And I've got my furthest on Savoy cabbages and uh, they're for summer and they're looking quite nice. I've just put a little net on them because of the pigeons. And then the final thing in this row is I've got my carrots. I've just thinned those out today and I've just got them under that temporary net uh, whilst I sort of look after them and thin them out probably one more time and I'll put the permanent net on and I won't open it then uh, until summer time not even to weed it because of carrot fly and just up against the polytunnel got the uh, last of my early potatoes looking quite nice outside now I've got loads of potatoes everywhere but uh, just put these lettuces in and I'll probably put beetroot in this bed at some point uh, probably late June early July something like that and then here I have some more uh, winter squash some more winter squash on that frame as well got my little snacking area outside the uh, polytunnel I've got strawberries and gooseberries guava berries and we're putting some blueberries down here and the polytunnel what a mess so absolutely crammed full of spring crops let's take a look so courgettes more courgettes cauliflower underneath there french beans which aren't doing very well but the ones back in the greenhouse are doing great so i'm not so worried about that Last few potatoes just to be harvested over the next week and a bit. Um, Calabrese, most of which has been harvested here. Still want to take out there. Uh, so I'll probably take that out at the weekend. And then that bed there at least can get replanted with those melons, which are in desperate need of planting out. And then down here, I've got some mega heads 
of Calabrese and uh, so I'll be picking those this weekend as well. I might take one more crop of side shoots off those the week after and then that bed will get replanted with courgettes and then what have we got down here? Beetroot, 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 beetroot all the way down there. I always do too much beetroot at this time of year uh, but anyway we're harvesting this beetroot now so we'll gradually be clearing all that and I'll be clearing all this lettuce and Asian greens and things next week and then start putting my tomatoes in down there and uh, that is oh and then I've got the strawberries of course up here so these are my early allotment strawberries I've got some much earlier strawberries back at home in the greenhouse we've been eating strawberries now for a month which has been brilliant these are just starting to uh, fruit in here so I think, oh and I've got tomatoes down here and tomatoes on the trestle table there. These are the tomatoes here that I've got that are just starting to fruit. Whereas the ones uh, back in the greenhouse, uh, they've had tomatoes on them for three or four weeks. So they're not far off ripening now. And then just outside here, I've got my early broad beans and my early carrots picking those carrots now, picking the courgettes now, and that's it. My name is Steve, this is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Lotman Channel, and I'll see you soon.